We all react instinctively and usually positively to a brand claiming that it is a manufacture. But what does that mean? The word is French and it just means factory a place where something is manufactured. But in watchmaking, manufacture has come to mean a factory or factories where a watch brand makes most, if not all, of the components necessary to make the entire watch. So how did this general term come to mean something so much more specific in the context of watchmaking? Let me explain. The phenomenon of producing everything necessary to produce a single product in one location is sometimes referred to as vertical integration. Now this again is a general industrial term for a manufacturing process where everything from the manufacturing basic components plus their finishing and final assembly all happens under one roof. This however can also mean that the company manufactures everything in facilities that it owns but which are not all in the same physical location. Now, manufacturer in modern watchmaking is a term used to mean that everything necessary to make a watch is produced by the same company whose name is on the dial. And let's talk about why that matters. Now, we like to think that if a watch brand is really important, it's capable of doing everything you need to make a watch. And what does that mean? Well, it's a very, very long list. In its most extreme form, it can mean that the company should make its own movements, which means making its own main plates, making its own bridges, making its own jewels, making its own jewel settings, making its own mainsprings, its own balance springs, its own balances, its own escapements, its own cases, its own bracelets and straps, and last but not least, doing this all in a single physical location. And this is a myth. That's just not how watches are made. As with any other high precision mechanism, for most of the history of watchmaking, many components were made by specialists, not in-house. To give you an example which may be somewhat controversial, in Karl Marx's Capital, the single longest sentence is a discussion of all the specialist component makers. And here it is. <clears throat> Formerly, the individual work of a Nuremberg artificer, the watch has been transformed into a social product of an immense number of detailed laborers, such as mainspring makers, dial makers, spiral spring makers, jewel pole makers, ruby lever makers, hand makers, case makers, screw makers, gilders, with numerous subdivisions such as wheel makers, brass and steel separate, pin makers, movement makers, achever de pignon, fixes the wheels on axles, polishes the facets, etc. Pivot makers, planteur de finissage, puts the wheels and springs in the works, finisseur de barrier, cuts teeth in the wheels, makes the holes of the right size, etc. Escapement makers, cylinder makers for cylinder escapements, escapement wheel makers, balance wheel makers, raquette makers, apparatus for regulating the watch, the planteur de échappement, escapement maker proper, and then the réparseur de barrier finishes the box for the springs, etc. Steel polishers, wheel polishers, screw polishers, figure painters, dial enamelers, melt the enamel on the copper, fabricante pendant, make the ring by which the case is hung, finisseur de charnier puts the brass hinge in the cover, etc. Faiseur de secret puts in the spring that opens the case. Graveur, ciseleur, polisseur de boîte, etc., etc. And last of all, the repasseur, who fits together the whole watch and hands it over in its going to state. <sighs> now, at the beginning of watchmaking in the late 15th and early 16th centuries, a single watch might have been made by a single person. But as watchmaking developed, it became clear that the best watches were watches with parts made by individual external contractors who were real experts in their fields. Let's take the mainspring, for instance. Making a mainspring requires a lock. It requires top quality steel. It requires understanding of the effects of heat tempering on spring elasticity. It involves an understanding of the effects of spring geometry on the power curve and a lot of other things. Making this one part might require years of training and apprenticeship with an expert in mainspring manufacturing. Watchmaking in Switzerland was therefore, for most of its history, represented by a highly complex web of trading relationships with experts in making individual components. Quality, therefore, was not a matter of vertical integration. It was a matter of how good your suppliers were. The classic example is the creation of high complications. These were mostly created by specialists who would provide their services to brands who could afford them. The idea of a true manufacturer is a recent one. The whole idea is more or less synonymous in our minds with the concept of in-house movement manufacturing, but this is an historically inaccurate picture of how watches were made. 
Most of the top fine watchmaking brands have, for most of their history, bought movements in from specialists. The idea of being a true manufacturer is more or less synonymous with the attraction of a movement being made in-house, although the term manufacturer is more comprehensive. Virtually every watch brand from entry level to the most expensive and exclusive works with at least some suppliers for its components. Most often, these are cases, bracelets, straps, buckles, movement jewels, lubricants, and the balance spring and mainspring. Who are the most vertically integrated watch brands? It's a very, very short list. Rolex is one very important example. Seiko and Grand Seiko are two other examples. Most brands in modern luxury groups do share at least some movements across brands. However, there are movements specific to particular brands also in most cases, although few are completely in-house or completely manufacturer made. Now, that's not to say that it can't say something important about a company. Doing as much as possible in-house is a demonstration that a company takes the art and science of watchmaking seriously. However, at least for me, it's not a make or break.